All right, now this is the part that I like, multiplying and dividing fractions. Now, what you're not going to like is adding and subtracting. That's, that's the beast. All right. This is, it's just multiplying. Okay. Now I could, what, just, yeah, right, you don't believe me? Okay. Oh, I said and dividing. Now, when you multiply a fraction times a fraction, you need to understand what it means. Like if we were to say this, if I say half of one-third, when we're talking about fractions and we have it like this, this means multiplication. When you have the word of used with fractions like this, it means multiplication. And to get a sense of what this looks like, think about food. Okay? I like food. I didn't used to like food, but my wife has changed me of that because she's a fantastic cook. I say cook, she is more of a baker than she is a cook. That is her strength. Anytime she says she's baking, I'm like, yay, and then I realize she's actually baking for somebody else. <laughs> Which means I only get the pieces that look like they fell off onto the floor. But hey, I'll take it, right? So if I have a third, a third would be, say that piece right there, right? That's what fractions mean, a third. Suppose this was your favorite candy bar or something. Here's a third of it, right? You get a third of it. I'm going to eat a third of my candy bar. Oh, we can do, let's do subtraction. If you're going to eat a third of it now, what do you have left over for the next day? Two thirds, right? Now here's the problem with this. You take a third to eat, right? But you have kids. And your kids say, I want half. Oh, they probably don't say half. They probably, I want it all, because that's what kids do. But if you say, no, I'll give you half. If you end up giving your kids half of this, what portion of the overall chocolate bar or candy bar did you give your kid? Did you give your kid a half of the whole candy bar? No. What portion did you actually give your kid? If you've got a third and they take a half of a third, what portion do I have here that they are getting? I, if, yeah, if I divide this into, if I divide this third into a half, and I divide these other pieces into halves as well, you see that I've divided this whole bar into sixths. So one half of, so let's do multiplication, one third, you guys can see it right here as being one over six. And how did that happen? Well, this is the beauty part about multiplying with fractions. This is why I love this. To multiply fractions, you multiply numerators. So what's one times one? one. Done. Multiply denominators. Two times three? Six. Done. That's it. The only thing you have to worry about is, is my fraction, is my answer in what? Lowest terms. What about one over six? Is that lowest terms? Uh huh. Yeah, because <laughs> what what number is going to go into one and six other than one? Well, I thought maybe we could do it. Don't, just don't, stop, stop. You're you're embarrassing yourself. So, and here's here's what this looks like. If we're going to make a rule about this, if I have a fraction that's of the form a over b, and I multiply this times another fraction, let's say c over d. To multiply, now again, this is easy if you would let it be easy. To multiply, you multiply the numerators. You multiply the denominators, and that's it. Just make sure that you, just make sure that you reduce. That's all you have to worry about. Can you do that? Now I see some of you might be kind of scared, but that's why I'm here. I am your security blanket. If you remember the movie Mr. Mom, I'm, I'm like your whoopee. <coughs> okay. If you don't know the movie, it's a fantastic movie from the early 80s. I mean, how can you go wrong with the early 80s, right? If I want to multiply these two fractions together, 2 fifths times 3 sevenths. 
according to the rule that I just wrote up here, what would you do? You would multiply those numerators together. You would multiply those denominators together, and you have what? 6 over 35, right? Please tell me you know that 5 times 7 is 35, right? Because sometimes I get people that think that 5 times 7 is 30. And if you do that, then you're going to end up with the wrong answer. So it is 6 over 35. And I want you to look at something. Where did I get the 6 over 35? I got it from multiplying this stuff here. Do you all agree? Can I reduce anything here? Is, does the 2 reduce with the 5 or the 7? Does 3 reduce with 5 or 7? Is there anything you can reduce here? No, so after you're done multiplying, you can't reduce this guy either. Do you believe me? Let's keep on going. What if I have negative 4 ninths times 10 thirds? Oh, you're bringing negatives into this? You must hate us. No, it's not me. It's you. Why, right, that's not the breakup line, is it? All right, so if I'm multiplying, what's a negative times a positive? A negative. Now, notice where I put my negative. I'm going to put it right in front of that fraction bar. So a negative what? What's in my numerator? Seriously, just check it out. 4 times 10 is 40. What's in your denominator? 9 times 3 is 27. Are there common factors between 40 and 27? No. Now, is this proper or improper? Improper. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Improper fractions are OK. Later on, we're going to talk about converting these guys into mixed numbers. And that can be very useful depending on what situation that we're in. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm OK with an improper fraction as long as it is written in what? In the lowest terms. In lowest terms. Okay. Now, when we get to mixed numbers, if I start off with mixed numbers, then you should probably finish in mixed numbers. A lot of times the instructions will tell you what you need to do. All right, suppose I have 5 fourths times 12 over 25. There are several ways of doing this. Now, if I start off by using the step that I showed you for multiplying fractions, you multiply the numerators, and you multiply the denominators. Do you all agree? Now, what you can do here is that you can reduce, before you multiply, and get larger numbers that may be out of control for you. I'm going to show you there's several ways of doing this. If, suppose I do it the long way, or what I might consider the long way. What's 5 times 12? 60. What's 4 times 25? 4 times 25 is 100, right? Now, I've got 60 over 100. Do these guys have a common factor? 10. Okay, if I reduce these by 10, then I would have what? I'd have 6 over 10. Is that in lowest terms? No. no, I can reduce these by a common factor of 2, and I end up with what? 3 fifths. Can I reduce 3 over 5 anymore? Nope. Now, this is not the only way to get to the answer, and I want to show you something else here. Please don't freak out on me. I'm here for you. So the alternative way of doing this, we had 5 times 12 over 4 times 25. Do you all agree? 
before I multiply and get larger numbers, keep things small. When you can keep your numbers small, they are a lot easier to work with. Are there common factors between the numerator and denominator the way this guy stands right now? What is common between something in the numerator and something in the denominator? Two? All right, so Lisa, you see a two where? Between what two factors? You said you saw a two. So look at the four and the 12. Doesn't two go into both of these guys? Mm -hmm. So two goes into, you know, I'm gonna do this. 12 is two times six, right? And four is two times two, do y'all agree? Have I changed my problem? No, I just rewrote it in a slightly different form. But if I do it this way, then you can see, oh, the two reduces with the two, right? Is there anything else I can do here? The two and the six also have something in common, right? So I can say two goes in here one time, two goes into six three times, right? Is there anything else that's common with the numerator and denominator? Fives, right? What's common between five and 25? Five. How many times does five go into five? And five goes into 25 five times. I know this looks very, very messy. What factors do you have left in just the numerator? Look at just the numerator. What do you have? One times three is what? Three over. The denominator is made up of one times five, so you get what? You get five. It's still the same answer. Do you all agree? If you didn't like that, I'm just going to, 5 is 5, right? 12, if you look at the prime factors for 12, 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. You'll see the guy often enough to know it's 2 times 2 times 3. Trust me. How can I rewrite 4? 2 times 2. How do I rewrite 25? five times five. You have everything completely broken down in terms of prime factors. Now find those common factors that reduce. What can reduce? The twos, the twos, and the fives, right? And that leaves the only factors of three over five. 